So hi, Mike Rob Hunter here. I received a message uh, from one of my viewers requesting a little bit of uh, some information concerning the prevention of fungus growth on the optical surfaces of microscopes. I need to explain this a little bit um, uh, because this is indeed a, a problem in some regions of the world and it's a long known problem. Um, in regions of the world where the humidity is relatively high, 60% and, and higher, um, what can be observed is, is that there is fungus actually growing on the, lens, on the lenses um, of, of a microscope and uh, this can of course uh, impact uh, the image quality. And uh, this is also something that has been known for quite a long time, and not only with microscopes, but also with uh, lenses for photo cameras. And that's an issue, and that's a problem, uh, because sometimes uh, this fungus cannot be removed so easily, because uh, it's very difficult to disassemble um, objectives. So microscope objectives can be very complicated. You might need specific tools. Um, some of the lenses are or, are or were glued in place, so it's not very accessible. And then you have, if you have a fungus growing at a very difficult to reach part, it can be very difficult to clean. Um, and uh, I'm gonna suggest some possibilities here. Um, I think there is not a very good solution to this problem, uh, but I'm just gonna also later on in this video um, give you some some possible options. First of all, um, the person who wrote me the message uh, said that um, he's been cleaning the microscope uh, lenses very very frequently using ethanol alcohol. Um, but after a short time, um, the fungus started to reappear. Now, when I heard that after some time it started to reappear, well, usually the fungi fungi when they grow they should not reappear too quickly. So this means if they start to appear after a very short time, then I think then this means that uh, it has not been completely removed so maybe there were still some of the spores left over um, I did a little bit of online research and then I found out the something that I have been already been using myself to keep my uh, toilet and my bathroom free of fungus and that is, is to use hydrogen peroxide H2O2 um, as a chemical to remove the fungus but I have to admit I have some hesitations with that um, because this is aggressive <laughs> this is an aggressive substance and I don't know if this H2O2, which is highly oxidizing, not also is able to damage the optical surfaces in other ways. The fungus itself is also able to damage the optical surfaces because it might actually secrete enzymes. It does that, as a matter of fact, and therefore even etch the surface of the glass and also maybe remove some of the lens uh, coatings. So the fungus itself might actually also do physical damage. It's not just growing there on the surface and can be removed, but actually it can actually also physically impact on the, on the glass itself. Um, so you see that uh, from a certain point onward maybe um, it's beyond repair. Um, so that is a, um, a problem. Um, so uh, my, I have, do have a couple of, of uh, solutions here and then I'm going to show you something very interesting because there is an old pamphlet for a Nikon microscope here and they actually have a solution as well in here which I'm going to also show you later. So first of all um, try um, the following if it doesn't work if you're not able to completely remove the the, the fungus from the microscope objective then I'm just gonna be very honest with you replace the objective if this is financially feasible um, if you have a relatively low-cost microscope which uses standard or bright field achromatic objectives then honestly um, it shouldn't be too expensive if you have a the traditional finite 160 millimeter standard you can obtain objectives relatively cheaply directly also from China over AliExpress as a matter of fact many microscope importers actually do that um, you might not be able to buy the individual objectives directly from the from the the uh, company that sold you the microscope but if they don't do that then you can actually go directly and uh, try to get it from china um, that is uh, maybe the yeah easiest way but i understand of course that uh, maybe you've got specialized objectives there um, especially all the expensive objectives and then of course the situation is is a little bit different in this case i think it might be necessary to actually send in the objective directly to to the um, to the company to get it uh, completely disassembled and, and, and serviced and properly cleaned um, and uh, then hopefully all of the remaining spores of the fungus are also removed uh, so that uh, it will not come back as quickly um, the question is now why is the fungus growing on the, um, on the lens surfaces on glass surfaces in the first place well of course the high humidity is one thing but the fungi they need um, some kind of a food to yeah to feed on 
and often these are dust particles uh, that um, somehow have found their way into the system um, and then the fungi they feed on that um, because as a matter of glass is inorganic they cannot feed directly on the glass the enzymes might damage the glass and these coatings uh, but they need some kind of an organic food um, so this one suggestion would be maybe not a very sufficient one or good one but kind of try to keep your microscope as dust free as possible um, to reduce the food and the nourishment for the fungi um, but I think it might not be a very realistic um, option because the fungi might still uh, be able to form. Um, I do have also another suggestion um, and uh, that's a hypothesis that I have uh, but uh, um, I've not found this anywhere online, so um, I do not know how well it works, but I think that there are a problem could be, especially in the tropical regions with high humidity where the temperature is generally quite high. Um, I can imagine that many labs have air conditions. And um, I think the problem could be the following. Uh, during the day when the air condition is on, um, then of course the temperature of the microscope um, drops. And then during night when you turn the air condition off and when the humidity and the temperature goes up again, um, then this can actually mean that maybe some of the moisture is actually going to condense on the optical surfaces. Um, and that's something that you don't want. I know that this is a problem with laptop computers um, that have been uh, carried out into the cold in winter time. It's cold and then you go back into the room uh, where it's warm. Um, and this can actually also cause damages to the laptop because uh, of water be condensing on the electronics. Um, you see this myself as well when I am outside with glasses and then I go into a warm room I'm not able to see because everything fogs up. So that's moisture which condenses and I think this could be also an issue. And the second issue is if you have these temperature changes then what's going to happen is, is that the air inside the microscope expands and contracts and every time when it cools down then it contracts and this might actually pull in more dust and spores from the environment into the air spaces. It's actually a reason why I had in my uh, down there I made another video on this why I had uh, so much dust inside the illumination system this is because every time when it heats up and cools down um, the air shrinks and expands and this always pulls in some of the dust and the dirt from the environment and over 20 years this is actually why dust built up actually in regions where there should not be any dust you wonder how does the dust get in there right um, because actually it should be com almost completely closed off but there are some small gaps there and over the years um, mm -hmm. the dust is able to enter there as well so reduce the temperature changes um, that would be my uh, suggestion um, keep uh, the room dust free and apparently the problem is so big that uh, certain companies and now that's where I'm c coming back to here they actually proposed a solution now the Alpha Fort 2 from Nikon. I mean, this is uh, this is oh, this pamphlet is over 20 years old. Okay, um, but the idea is quite interesting. Uh, it's in German, but uh, but what they have here is the following: a whole page dedicated uh, to preventing fungus fungal growth. They're actually using this as an advertisement to show that the microscope is suitable um, also for, for hot and humid regions because what they've done is the following. They've used special antifungal coatings on the lens surfaces and they say that it's going to last three years. Okay, uh, so for three years, they, yeah. And another thing, well, the, the other thing, that's actually the thing for the three years is that down here, uh, they're actually selling those antifungus tablets, what they call. And these are um, basically uh, seem to be sticky strips and what you do is, is there are places in the microscope where you have to stick them in um, and this kind of I guess releases some kind of a chemical to reduce the fungal growth inside the microscope. Um, and they actually says here well after three years you have to replace that okay so I guess it's some kind of a chemical that is uh, continually re released and in, on the picture here they've got what one two three they've got four spaces inside a microscope four regions inside a microscope where you have to apply these uh, antifungal tablets as they call it uh, antifungus tablets um, and this uh, kind of to reduce the growth of fungi so it's that much of a problem okay it's a well-known problem <laughs> um, and as well and uh, I've also uh, actually found, did some online research that other microscope manufacturers like Zeiss, for example, um, and they're also uh, dealing with this issue uh, because, yeah, they also have their own solutions um, also to kind of uh, um, reduce fungal growth. And there's actually a website also for, for of Zeiss and, uh, which actually gives certain recommendations on how you should store your microscope to reduce the possibility of fun fungi growing. And they actually, it's, some people have also said is you can use silica gel and you have to store it in a certain cabinet, but it's not uh, supposed to contain certain substances like leather um, is, is bad and, and certain things. Um, so I just want to say that the whole thing with fungus is a big issue. Um, and 
I think as of now there has not been a fully satisfactory solution maybe okay um, simply by by going online and seeing how many people are having a problem um, with the fungal growth it's actually one website actually who said the following if you have not seen any fungus growing on your uh, optical surfaces yet on cameras in this case is this because you have not been looking good enough apparently it's that that common okay um yeah so that's that's kind of it um yeah my my advice is is uh, think uh, carefully whether cleaning it is actually uh, the thing that you want to do or whether it's still worth it um, otherwise if the objectives are not all too expensive that you're going to use um, get yourself a set a new set of objectives um, or i know this is a very unpopular one uh, maybe you don't need such an ex expensive and a good microscope for your routine analysis um, then maybe i don't know uh, it's, it's an uncool thing just replace the microscope every three years when um, new fungus starts to grow um, maybe maybe if a 300 euro 300 dollar microscope does the job as well well maybe it's also worth considering i don't know if i should have said this i don't know yeah uh, you can you get what i mean um I just wanted to say the following. Um, I included a couple of links that I found um, online, but please be careful when you use any um, non-conventional substances um, on your optical surfaces. Uh, be careful that you don't hurt yourself, especially with H2O2, um, and make sure that you don't hurt your microscope optics even more. Okay, that's really important. Um, wish you all the best. Happy microbe hunting as always. See you around next time. Bye-bye.